Hey, this is Notzer, and today I wanted to take a look at uh, something a little bit different. <laughs> this is the Sinyang, and this is the Tier 8 Pan-Asian DD. And I wanted to see how well it worked out, and uh, the game ended up being an uh, awesome game. So we're going to talk through the game, talk through my build, the strat, the whole nine yards, and hopefully you enjoy it. Now, as far as my modules are concerned, main armament protection, extended duration radar, because we are the radar build for the Sinyang, uh, the improvement for torpedoes, faster rudder shift, and concealment. All these skills make perfect sense uh, with the strat that I'm going for. Uh, for the commander, preventative maintenance, great last stand, great. Uh, we have survivability expert, concealment, adrenaline rush, uh, radio location, and that main armament plus AA skill. Overall, it's my gun build plus a little bit of the extended duration radar, and hopefully we're going to get a good game. Now, there is an aircraft carrier. It is a tier 6 aircraft carrier, so it's not going to be quite as hard as it could potentially be, aka a tier 10 aircraft carrier. Uh, but, you know, we headed towards the closest objective, and the closest objective is this enemy, Anshan. This is the, uh, what, tier 6, tier 7, Soviet, or... Uh, Sorry, Pan-Asian Soviet ship. He decides to pop his smoke. And in response, I'm going to use my... I'm going to use my radar and obviously detonate him. That was the plan the whole time. Uh, this is the reason why I wanted to explore this ship. And uh, more so the uh, Pan-Asian ships in general. Because they don't really belong in the game at this point. They just get outclassed by so many different things. Now they do have radar which is a huge, unique trait. Uh, only certain premiums at this point even have access to it. And obviously, deep water torpedoes. So when you're approaching, well, at least whenever I'm approaching how to play in the Sinyang or the Yuyang or the uh, Chengmu, uh, I'm trying to consider where am I best at? And that was a perfect example of where I was best at. The opponent popping smoke and me being able to fire on him quickly without anyone else in the uh, combat area to keep me spotted, whether it be aircraft or, you know, even uh, another ship. So it, it worked out perfectly. I would always encourage you guys to push the tempo a little bit, at least initially. Uh, not obviously brazen and stupid, but you want to get into a position where potentially you can punish a player with your radar. That has always been the case with all radar builds, you know, Des Moines, uh, the Soviets, the Brits. You've got to place your radar in a position where you can get a lot of value out of it without taking too much loss. And the best thing that a DD radar ship can do is turn that smoke on its side and take that advantage away. And that's exactly what we ended up doing, and we captured the base. Conveniently, the aircraft carrier recalled his aircraft right over me. Now, I could have kept my AA turned off, but... It was so close to being captured, it didn't really matter. So we sent our deep water torpedoes. And you'll notice, I don't invest much in my deep water torpedoes. Uh, I invest basically one module. And that one module keeps it from being incapacitated as frequently. Uh, incapacitations are killer for torpedo reload. And the reload's already too long. So I was hoping that getting a little bit more speed in the torpedoes and also incapacitation protection should allow them to be used more frequently on cooldown, even if it's not, you know, the best situation. So, enemy DD, well, enemy cruiser, attempted to maybe contest. I don't know why he tried to do that at B point. Uh, obviously, the smoke fired him, and he, he moved off. Aircraft care is dealing with him. And because of the situation, I am trying to verify that I have the chance to fire without being spotted. And we actually set a fire on him which is a great little bonus. Now, I'm not gonna change, I'm not gonna keep firing on him, I'm gonna fire at someone else, the Bismarck. Uh, the Pan-Asians are kind of like the Americans in they have ridiculous shell velocity. It goes straight to the moon, and that helps for firing over islands, but that doesn't help for open water, you know, using the momentum and dodging. You really have to camp a little bit more in something like a Pan-Asian, in this instance, the Sinyang, uh, and make use of those islands. 
Uh, yeah, we don't have smoke. And smoke would be great against the aircraft carrier. I'm so thankful that the aircraft carrier hasn't harassed me. If he does harass me, it just ends up being a, a slower game for me. Uh, not necessarily a, a quick death, but it just slows down the game. So I'm just happy that he's not interested in us. And we can set another fire. Nice. Uh, I, I feel pretty lucky. Getting three fires within the first six minutes of the match. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, so we're going to go out in the open. I decided to keep my AA turned off uh, against the Vessa. Uh, I'm hoping to turn it on once I have committed to going parallel and moving away from the attack rocket. It's an AP attack rocket. It's really bad when you're parallel to it. And in fact, it's so bad that he actually calls it off. Because he knows. He knows he's going to do zero damage. Uh, but we actually get pretty fortunate and we get some kills on his squadron before it is usable on, I think, the Fusa? Yeah, it's a Fusa. But of course, we're taking fire from the Bismarck secondary for free. Uh, there's nothing we could do about it. We're spotted. The Bismarck in that position is going to have that advantage. Uh, I do notice that the Farragut is not healthy at all. And at this point in the game, I felt like, you know, the Sinyang was doing well. But it still wasn't enough to win this game. Now, one thing that's cool about the Pan-Asians, and it's something that they don't really... Nobody uses it like this because nobody would actually care to use it like this. Because they're giving up so much. But you can safely send your torpedoes in the face of friendlies. Especially DDs, if you're, if you're trying to work with another DD. It's going to pass harmlessly underneath them. Uh, so you don't have to think about, oh, I might hurt my teammate. So I ended up sending against this Bismarck, uh, knowing that, of course, the Bismarck has to use Hydro. And we did do a little misplay there. I fired just a little too much, and we were detected. Unfortunately, the Farragut did a little bit more of a misplay and is completely gone. Uh, the Bismarck tried to reposition himself, uh, and he, of course, did. I obviously have my torpedoes still waiting on cooldown because I missed them completely with his Hydro. Uh, you don't want to go all in like I did with the torpedoes. Really, I think the best way to play torpedoes is one send at the momentum indication, and then maybe a widespread or maybe another send at a different, slightly um, more useful angle once they've committed. Sending both together, overlapping, doesn't end up giving you the big juicy damage it's, it's asking, do you want chip damage, or do you want to alpha him? And if you alpha him out, it's probably only going to happen once in 100 games. Chip damage, if you play it right, you can probably get chip damage pretty much every send if the target is in that position that slow. But I'm trying to get distance to this guy. I know that he has hydro. He doesn't have the old hydro when he was broken as hell with like 6 kilometer range. Uh, but he still has hydro, and it's good enough to... Uh, sail on top of us and force us into a compromising position. Uh, now, I've been more enthusiastic lately exploring. Now, here's the perfect send to me uh, against this guy. He can send right at the indicator and then widespread, so plus or minus. Uh, it ends up giving me just the right amount. Of course, there's another Bismarck, so I can't openly fire here either. Uh, but I would love to potentially shoot him. And <laughs> you can see me wiggle my, my, my uh, mouse hand because I want to fire so bad. But I don't have smoke. It's not in my best interest to fire. And it looks like we're going to land two torps. Actually, three torps. But two were all that was needed to take him out. Bismarck gone. Uh, and this game is still close enough that we could potentially win it. Uh, we just have a lot of game to go. I would just love to kill you so much, man. Ugh, just like seething hatred. Not for the player, but for the ship. Uh, I would love for, potentially, to get around this island in line of sight with the Bismarck not being able to return fire. Remember, the Sinyang, just like American DDs, huge advantage when firing close to islands because they can fire over them. Of course, there's an aircraft carrier with his squadron in the area, and I have my AA turned on because I just want to get it done. And you know what I say? Uh, well, we've got to just work this guy down. If we don't take this guy out, we're going to lose too many. And this is a big advantage, and I do have radar. So him trying to pop his smoke, it's not really going to work in his favor. And we do take him out. 
actually. We didn't really need radar there. We got kind of fortunate that we didn't need it. Uh, but the radar play was going to work regardless because that's just what radar does. Uh, now I'm trying to disengage quickly without taking too much damage, appreciating the updated secondary accuracy as it's not really doing as much as maybe it could have at this distance uh, a patch or two before. But you know what? Felt good. We picked off that DD. Uh, there's a bunch of approaching battleships and cruisers. My teammates are so low over here. I don't know how we ever have a chance. Uh, I need to just stay unspotted at this point. There's really no reason to fire my gun. Uh, I don't have any way of dealing with it. Of course, enemy air is uh, in the area. I'm just trying to get rid of his advantage, honestly, uh, and do it in a safe way. Knowing that it's only one aircraft, that could really mean you know, 10, 20 seconds. Can the enemy turn and fire at you in 10 to 20 seconds. You have to decide that for yourself. Now, uh, the West, very successful. They're actually capturing the enemy base, uh, but they could be overrunning it. Uh, I did send at the Bismarck, assuming that he's going to come around the island. I did do that technique, uh, narrow and then wide, just to get a little bit of chip damage and also get some uh, good burst damage. The enemy aircraft carrier, of course, dropping his torpedoes, uh, but he missed. Uh, we're going to get one... Oh, we just barely missed on the front end. We do get one torpedo, which I wish I would have gotten more, uh, but we didn't. And uh, there is an island very close, so I want to be careful not to run into it. That's that's the surefire way to lose. If we would have gotten another torpedo hit, maybe we would have had a little bit more success. Uh, now, one thing that's cool about this position... I actually have an island close, and there's an aircraft carrier that is potentially spotting. So if I place myself behind this island and benefit from the team... Yeah, <laughs> can you see the telegraph? If I can get behind this island with the aircraft carrier spotting, I could potentially stall them. Doesn't end up working out that fast, and I actually pull a trigger just a few seconds too soon. Uh, but we do have both actually spotted. Now he's going to try and fire on us. Bless his little battleship heart there. Uh, the Bismarck looks to be going for the aircraft carrier, so I would really like it to start some burning. We do have our torpedoes. Unfortunately, they don't have range. So I can't even attempt to torpedo the Bismarck, and I'm trying desperately not to take too much return fire. But we are trying to do some damage. It's two bases to two bases. The enemy basically has our bases, and we basically have theirs. We've rushed through each other. Uh, I'm just trying to safely do damage, knowing that I only have one radar. I only have one speed boost. There is a battleship that is approaching, and I'm hoping that the aircraft carrier will spot it before forcing me to have to use something. I do have my torpedoes available, and I'm ready to use them in an attempt to avoid this situation oh that was so close uh, I end up sending uh, however it does feel like it, it's probably going to overlap on the island there and I'm just trying to book it man let's get the hell out of here hug the island uh, try and slow him down like desperately trying to slow him down uh, we end up getting one torpedo which is nice and it does cause a flood so he's going to use damage control uh, I do think that that was successful in slowing down his momentum just enough that I can get out of here. And oh man, he routed it just as we're rounding this. He's going to get a nice little chip damage there. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty well played, honestly, by the enemy battleship. He was very successful in rounding the island without taking too much damage. Uh, I think I did about as well as I could have done in that situation. Uh, and now I have a chance to capture this base while, of course, he's capturing that base. Uh, there's three enemy ships down here. There's an aircraft carrier that's hiding in some nook and cranny up on the northeast side. Uh, so I'm just trying to keep my distance from these guys and sail away into the open ocean. I don't want to get closed down or bogged down by this battleship. I figure that the Lyon is trying desperately to rush us, or the Normandy. Uh, I know it's French. Uh, he's trying to desperately rush us. So I'm assuming that he's going to come around the corner and I need to at least have my detection ring on this side of the island not overlapping because if it's overlapping, he could easily come inside of it and detect us. And we don't want that. We don't want to be detected. Uh, so 
It looks like potentially the Bismarck is the closer of the two targets with radio location confirming it. And it is. That's good. I figure oh, it's pretty safe to attempt to reconnect with my teammates who are, you know, fighting. Fighting to try and take out the aircraft carrier. I'm surprised that the aircraft carrier put himself in that position because it's really the only way that he would be taken out. Our friendly aircraft carrier has, for whatever reason, been successful in avoiding the attention of the enemy. And I think they were maybe chasing me a little bit too much. I don't know. It could have been the difference in keeping him alive. I'm thankful that they chose to because ultimately it ended up working out perfectly. Uh, but now we are in a position where we can once again turn our AA back on, try and do a little bit of chip damage to not only the aircraft, but also the enemy battleships. Do it in a way that's safe uh, and reliable. Uh, but I, I still would like this aircraft to be completely gone before attempting to do anything else. This is the last squadron that he has. Uh, so he does end up sending and it doesn't do anything, so... Finally, the aircraft carrier is no longer a threat. He is gone for good. Uh, we just have these battleships that are chasing us. This was a bad decision to me. Open fire in a ship like this doesn't really work because the speed is just so bad. It really isn't worth the small amount of damage that we would ultimately do here. Uh, now, obviously, that's hindsight. Uh, but as you can tell, it's not good at open water. You don't ever want to open water with one of these guys. You really want to try and use the island. Oh, we got to survive this. We're going to try and drop our speed and turn away. Thankfully, the Bismarck has horrible accuracy, so the shells fall harmlessly. This is what you want. You want the target spotted by a friendly and for you to farm it over the island. That's the perfect ideal Sinyang with its guns. Obviously, ocean... This build's going to be pretty bad. <laughs> You're not going to have anything to hide yourself. Uh, but on every other map, the build works just fine, as long as you work within. And uh, we're paying attention. As we're doing good damage to the Bismarck, we don't want to get too close to the island because he will use Hydro and spot us. There is the Normandy, of course. He's coming around the island, hoping to potentially spot us. I decide, let's send a torpedo at the gap. Maybe the Bismarck rushes through it. Maybe it catches another ship that's in the area. Uh, you never want to just continuously hold on your torpedoes and never have any, any use for it. Now, it is hard to decide to do a torpedo send, especially when a target just clearly isn't going to do what you want him to do. But it's important to try and to not die, and that's my goal here. Uh, so we end up sending against the Normandy... Uh, I'm trying to make sure I'm getting distance. I am desperately trying to speed through so that his momentum will carry him just behind and not actually detect me. My torpedoes look like they might touch one part of his ship. Uh, it doesn't look good. I think he's going to dodge it completely. And teammate, yeah, of course. The Bismarck's still there, and yep, here he goes. He can clearly see us. This is clearly very dangerous. We clearly need to just run the hell away. Uh, and I'm trying to do that at this point. Bismarck knocked out by friendly Bismarck. He's going to fire at us. Oh, his AP shell accuracy. Oh, man. I think, I think we won the game. Yeah, I think that was the W. I'm glad. The Sinyang is not the easiest DD to play. Uh, but it is an interesting DD. I really have enjoyed using radar as a tool against my opponent. Uh, and, you know, let's face it, it's easy to use cruisers and um, heavy cruisers, light cruisers with the radar. It's much harder to use the pan agents. I wouldn't say that necessarily I feel like, oh yeah, this is the perfect build and it's always going to be successful. No, no it's not. You have to play very specifically, as you can see. Fire over islands, be careful not to be in open water, send torpedoes, but be careful because it's a long cooldown, and use that radar as a huge punishment for any ships that might stay in their smoke, and uh, you'll do pretty well. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in to this video. If you like it, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. 
Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, we do World of Warship videos, first impression how-to news and review. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. You can take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you and have a wonderful day.